Peter Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. With William Gackson and Victor Moore, Dale Evans, Ray Noble and his orchestra, the Sportsman Quartet, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Don't forget me. And our special guest, Gene Arthur. Charlie McCarthy. And, of course, that great comedy personality, the favorite of all favorites. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. I blush with modesty. The one and only yeah. Edgar Bergen. Yeah. And, and, and. Oh, and, and Edgar Bergen's assistant, um, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh... <laughs> Don't you whatchamacallit me, you. It's Charlie McCarthy. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, of course, yes, you assistant, whatchamacallit, you wild part. Please, Charlie. Ray Noble and his orchestra are going to play Riding for a Fall. You can dedicate that to Noble or the good one there. <laughs> And what you might call it, assistant of all people. Not to ruin my whole season. To my dying day, I shall hate that man. I shall hate him. Charlie, I want you to stop that nonsense now. I shall hate him nevertheless. <laughs> Hello, what's the trouble, child? Oh, uh, uh, good old Ray Noble. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did, did you hear that crack that Goodwin slung at me, Ray? Oh, yes. But, Charlie, uh, why don't you just be big about the whole thing and ignore him? Ignore him. That sometimes hurts more, you know. Yes, oh, surely. Oh, yes. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Charlie, I, I'm sorry about that remark I made. You don't feel any dislike toward me, do you? Uh, <laughs> of course not, my dear boy. Not at all. Maybe a little, uh, little hatred and loathing, uh, but not dislike. No. <laughs> What did you do with yourself all summer? Oh, I just tried to build myself up with uh, physical exercise. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gee, I worked right through without a let-up. I'll ignore him, that's wrong. Do <laughs> any fishing, Ray? Oh, yes, a little, just mm -hmm. a little. Yes, uh, I didn't have any time for fishing. You know, all summer long, I worked and slaved. Deep-sea fishing, Ray? Oh, no, chef, mostly fresh water. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Gee, mm -hmm. fellas, like a dog I slave. Catch many dogs? I mean... Uh... <laughs> Oh, no, just a few slaves. Yeah. What? <laughs> I was so tired. Mr. Goodwin, if you don't mind, Ray and I would like to talk alone. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. You mean that I should have possibly step out? Uh, uh, possibly, yeah. Or get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> I have never met such sensitive people. Yes, yeah, so I'll take it in there. <laughs> Now, Ray, to get back to your vacation. <laughs> yes? Uh, just what did it include? Oh, I did so many things, old pal. Mm -hmm. Yes, I golfed, I cycled, and I tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Mad fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just marvelous. Yeah, utterly mad, yeah. Uh, well, personally, I baseballed, velocipeded, and uh, tiddlywinked. Uh, <laughs> I suppose you went in for soccer and rugby, Ray? No, as a matter of fact, Edgar, I didn't. But uh, part of the time I played cricket. Oh, cricket? <laughs> ah, yes, Rob. You belong to a cricket club? Oh, no, boy, I played alone. Alone? Yes. How can you play cricket alone? Well, it's perfectly simple, my dear old boy. I just get down on my hands and knees and rub my hind legs together. Yeah. <laughs> Here, oh, I say, it's too bad. You just can't tell a joke around here. Well, you certainly can't, no. <laughs> Honest to goodness, if it isn't one thing, it's both. Yeah. You know, Bergen, we, we never should have come back from Newfoundland. That's what we should have done. Oh, yes. What wonderful memories, though, we have of Newfoundland. Yeah. Entertaining those American and Canadian soldiers and sailors who patrolled the North Atlantic. Yeah, and how about those guys who fly to bombers? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You know how many bombers I counted headed for Europe? Charlie, please. What? Now, now, now. That's a military secret. Oh, yes, yeah, just it. Oh, Berlin must know about it by now, though. <laughs> I, I must say, we made a lot of lovely friends up there. Yes, we did. And, and they were swell, really. Yes. You, you know, some soldiers took me on a whaling expedition. Whaling? Mm-hmm. Mm, I see. So you went whaling? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Whaling, sailing, and over the railing. Yes. <laughs> Of course, you, you were a great help, I imagine. Well, as a matter of fact, I caught a whale single-handed. Is that so? Yes. I suppose you grabbed him by the tail. Uh, no, you don't do that, though, I see. <laughs> I'm silly. I, I steered him with one of those garboons. With, with a what? <laughs> no. Baboon? No, baboon. No, no, no. Spittoon. No, sir. <laughs> well, harpoon. I said harpoon. 
spoon, didn't I? Say it, I said it. Yeah. Well, anyway, he was so big we got 6,000 barrels of oil out of him. 6,000 barrels. Mm hmm. Yes. 6,000, yes. Old might have been a little one way or the other, I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot of oil, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I think I told it rather well. <laughs> Well, Charlie, remember remember when we were at uh, uh, Kitty Bitty Guts? Hey, what do you, what do you, what? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Did you see those thousands of codfish drying in the sun? No, I didn't, but I got wind of them. Yes, yeah, I <laughs> Well, of course, that's to be expected because codfishing is their main industry. And it's also the home of the famous Newfoundland dog. Yes. See, they're big fellas, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, they use dogs up there just like we use horses. You mean they eat them? No, no. <laughs> Charlie, I want you to be two very good friends of mine. They're very famous comedians. Uh huh. This is William Gaxton. Hello, Mr. Gaxton. Glad to see you, Charlie. Oh, that was short, wasn't it? <laughs> and this is Mr. Victor Moore. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Moore. Hello, Charlie. I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> oh, you couldn't be that glad. <laughs> Mr. Moore, you talk like you got a misery. Yes, my feet are killing me. Oh, I see. Having trouble getting the right shoes, Victor? Yes, uh, I'm going to try a new shoe store today. Gaxton's... Bordery Shoppy. Hmm. I, I never heard of it. Uh, well, it's right along here somewhere. Uh, it's very nice to hear your voice again, Dale. Why, thank you, Edgar. <laughs> Say, Charlie and Bill Goodwin didn't hit it off so well together, did they? <laughs> I noticed that. Well, Charlie sometimes shows a lack of respect for his elders. I've got a suggestion to make. Why, Jean Arthur. Hello, Edgar. Did you overhear our little discussion? Yes, and I wish you'd let me talk to Charlie. He should be treated like a little boy. Oh, you really think so? Certainly. Yeah. What this problem needs is a woman's touch. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll wrap that boy around my little finger. Charlie? Oh, Charlie? Just watch me. Hello, Miss Arthur. My, but we're bright and cheerful this evening, aren't we? Are we? You know, Charlie, I haven't seen you in a long, long time. Yeah. Well, you, you, you're lucky to find me still a bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you must be rather popular. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, this scarcity of men is very becoming to me. <laughs> Maybe so, Charlie, but don't forget, you have a lot of the little boy in you yet. Yeah, yes, yeah, well, I got a lot of the old boy in me, too. <laughs> No, no, no. I'll be enough of that, young man. Oh, you are a cute little tyke. A little tyke for the love of Mike. What is this? Charlie, I have a surprise for you. Surprise? I brought you a little present. Oh, what is it? Well, I was torn between a little red pail and shovel and a set of building blocks. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you'll pardon me while I put my foot in my mouth, will you? <laughs> Don't worry. I finally decided on a book written especially for little boys. Yeah, well, don't tell me it's Jack and the Beanstalk. It's... Oh, no. It's much more advanced than that. Thank you kindly. What is it? Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You think I'm ready for it? <laughs> Gee, you, you got me wrong. I'm a pin-up boy, not a safety <laughs> pin-up boy. <laughs> Now, Charlie, Goldilocks was my favorite story when I was a boy. Is it as old as that? Yeah. <laughs> of course, I was thinking of the Swedish version. Uh-oh. Oh, was there a Swedish version, Edgar? Ixne, Ixne, Ixne. Yes, indeed, yes. Uh, instead of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it's called Brunhilde and the Three Bruins. Uh, <laughs> please, please, sir, not that. All right, oh, I'm sorry, Jean. It's your story. Go ahead. All right. Now, now, once upon a time... Original, isn't it? Near a forest at the edge of a village lived a little girl named Goldilocks. <laughs> Now, Charlie. <laughs> now, Charlie, why do you suppose they called it Goldilocks? Well, now, let me see. Goldilocks, huh? Could you give me a hint? Oh, think hard. Goldilocks. <laughs> uh, Lots, Goldilocks. 
Quite the sticker, isn't it? <laughs> Locks. She worked at Locky? Oh. No. I just thought I'd take a flyer at it. I didn't know. Oh, darling. They called her Goldilocks because she had long golden hair. No. Was it really golden? Well, maybe it was a little dark at the roof. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, there were three bears that lived in the woods. The mama bear, the papa bear, and, and the cannon bear. No, no. <laughs> no, the baby bear. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> they all lived together in the middle of a forest in their own little house. The bears own their own house? Yes, they just had a good season in Vaudeville. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> now, one day while strolling in the woods, Goldilocks came to the house where the three bears lived. So she went up to the door and knocked. Thump. Thump, thump, thump. <laughs> what was she wearing, brass knuckles? <laughs> Nobody answered, so Goldilocks went in. I suppose she knocked the door down. No, silly, she picked the lock. Oh, I see. In the living room, she saw three chairs. A big chair, a middle-sized chair, and a teensy-weensy chair. <laughs> Goldilocks sat in the big chair and said, This chair is much too hard. Is that so? Yes. <laughs> Well, why don't you get a pillow? There is no pillow. Did you look? Of course I... Uh, no, no, I just sit in a chair. It was the three locks. The what? Uh, I mean, I mean Goldie Bear. Goldie Bear? I mean Goldie Digger. Go- I don't know what I mean. Well, why don't you try a little red riding boots? Yeah. You know. <laughs> Stop. You're doing very well, Jean, very well. So, anyway. Anyhow. Well, finally, she sat down in the teensy weensy chair and broke it all to pieces. Chunky little rascal, isn't she? <laughs> then she went into the kitchen, and what do you suppose she found steaming on the table? Not the chasing sand, no. no. <laughs> Three bowls of porridge. Yeah. One was too hot, one was too cold, and one was just right. So she ate it all up. And they had lived happily ever after the end. No, no. <laughs> Will you please finish the story? After that, she went upstairs, and she found three beds. One was too hard, one was too soft, mm-hmm. and one was just right. So she ate it all up. No. <laughs> I must say, you are the last word, Charlie. Thank you. In bad manners. Oh. <laughs> then, Goldilocks went sound asleep in the little bed. She was very tired. Yeah. She probably heard this story. No, no. <laughs> Yes. The bears come home and the story gets better. It's a thing she can't get any worse. <laughs> the bears walked in the house and said, Who's been sitting in my chair? Who's been eating in my bed? Who's been sleeping in my porridge? This is the silliest thing I ever heard. <laughs> bears sleeping in a porridge. Now, Jean, I don't like to correct you there, but are you sure it was porridge? What do you mean, Edgar? Well, in the Swedish version, I believe the bears said, By yump in Yemeni. Who's been eating my smorgasbord? <laughs> yes, it is now. I'm no. sure that's very interesting, Edgar, that's... but let's get back to the story. Must we? Charlie, if you interrupt me once more, I won't finish the story. Don't tempt me. <laughs> and you blow again. I try to be nice and tell you a story, and all you do is make fun of me. <laughs> now look what you've done, Charlie. You... Oh, please, Miss Arthur, don't cry like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, you see, well, I take it all back. It's the nicest story I ever heard. Oh, holy gee, don't open that up. <laughs> I believe I know a way to cheer us all up. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the Swedish version of the story. <laughs> 